Hey everyone, I got a very exciting show for you today. I have a guest that was actually recommended from one of my students, and we're going to be talking about the exciting space of potentially investing in large apartment buildings, kind of a different way. So we're going to get into all of that. Let's welcome Kevin Swill to the show. How are you doing, Kevin? How are you, Michael? Nice to see you. I'm doing very well, Kevin. Why don't you do me a favor, introduce the audience to who you are, what you are doing today, uh, and then we will kind of get into, you know, kind of what got you here. But let's start with what you're doing today, Kevin, at, at Wilton Investment Group. Sure. So at Wilton Investment Group, I am Director of Capital Markets, and we have a platform whereby we provide uh, pretty much 100% of the LP equity needed for large national developers around the country to build their apartment complexes. So we'll do any investment from, let's say, $10 million up to $50 million of their equity. The sponsor does put in some of the equity. We ask for 15 to 20%, and then we put up the rest. Uh, my background personally has you know, 30 years of experience whether it's been in the apartment development business, whether it's been in the apartment acquisition disposition, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and and um, and refinancing of those. So I've been on the I've been on the investment banking side where I've lent. I've learned that business pretty well. I was one of the early uh, pioneers of the CMBS world back in the early '90s. Then I moved over to the private side, and I was president of a very large development company where we had about 32,000 apartments, uh, also some single family we built, we sold, all of that, that business is still thriving. And then I went over and I started to do single family homes and got on the development side of those types of tracks and the financing and the capital raising of that. Uh, and my passion, I'm, I'm a deal junkie, I must <laughs> say it. But um, then from there I went into equity raising and um, I worked for a firm in New York City where I raised a little over two and a half billion dollars from my Middle East contacts, my European contacts, and Asian contacts. And now I've brought that down to Florida where I now reside. Um, I've been fortunate enough to do that. And I teamed up with Wilton, which as I said, is based in New York, but uh, we're national. And, uh, and I'm helping them raise this new platform. Very, very cool. Well, I'd be remiss given your experience if I didn't at least take a chance to ask you about the CMBS world um, yes. because it kind of feels like that's going to be where the maximum pain is in this go around, right? The 06, 08, whatever you call that was a very yes. residential world. This right. one feels like it's going to be in the, the, the office and retail. And, and I don't think we've ever experienced something like this before. Is that, is that fair to say or am I just novice to all of this? I, th I think I think it's very fair to say. I mean, back you know in 2008, it was the whole recession really started from a capital markets imbalance. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's really what everything was. It was an uh, you know this really is unprecedented because this recession started with this health pandemic. Yep. And we didn't know where it was going to go, and we didn't know how quick it was going to multiply. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that you know, where we had some job loss, if you will, some real large unemployment numbers back in 2000, 2000, uh, 2007, 2008, mm -hmm. and, and thereafter, the issue was all economics. And it was, it was the housing market that, that really triggered it. Here, it's a secondary effect mm -hmm. because yes, now with this new world that we live in, you know, are people still gonna go to the retail stores? and shop, the big box stores. We saw what happened to Lord and Taylor. We're seeing what's happening to some of the others. Um, you know, so there are those issues on the retail side that I don't know if that'll ever recover. Yeah. Uh, then, you know, on the office side, I think two and a half months of this, you know, stay at home uh, has worked fairly well for most businesses mm -hmm. and most offices. Uh, and I think that the way of moving forward is if you really want to be on the cutting edge, it's to use the technology that has grown from this pandemic mm -hmm. uh, to allow us to do business in a different way, uh, especially in, in my world of the multifamily way, it's yeah. very different, yeah. but, um, but it works. So you may have smaller offices, you may have people downsizing their office space. Yeah. Um, so I, I see that happening. As it relates to securitization and CMBS, Yes, I think it's going to be a major problem for office buildings 
and for retail centers on, you know, on their securitized notes. Um, so the good news is, is I don't deal in that world anymore. <laughs> and really the apartments that we work with are on the construction financing side, mm-hmm. uh, not on the permanent, lo- uh, permanent loan side. So I've learned to stay away from that and, and knock on wood, multifamily right now is an essential business. Mm-hmm. So our business is still moving forward. Um, you know, one of the big things and indicators that we look at is where are the collections going to be? Because mm-hmm. we know that the new laws out there are you can't evict somebody and, you know, you have to work out payment plans. But in the month of March and April, we've been at 95% collections, which is very, very good. And yeah. those few that are not are already working out payment plans. So I really don't have evictions to speak about, but I am happy to say that uh, our, our payment plans and or our tenants are still paying their full rent. Wow, that is awesome. So uh, thank you for that. I just had to ask, given your history, I, I see, again, I, I've done this for 20 years, very residential focused guy. You know, kind of the biggest thing I own is 20 units. Um, right. It's a very different pain point. And I'm not really sure. I think assets have to be repriced, repriced, which probably makes their debt, they can call the debt probably if it gets repriced bad enough. But that ultimately ends up in bank pain. And the yes. reason I track that is because if I want to borrow money from the bank, it's still the same pot of money. And I think interest rates could go up and fees could go up. That's kind of why I'm tracking that side of the equation. I, I, definitely, I definitely believe, oh, oh, oh. you're good. Are you there? Oh, yeah. I just, I, I lost seeing you. Ah. Um, nope. Okay. I, just, I can All still right. hear you. You're good. We're, we're still good. So, uh, yes, I mean, I, I definitely see that. Uh, the, I guess the, the issue is, is rates are going to go up uh, for sure. Uh, I think the fees are going to go up because the banks need to make the money, but they're going to be a yeah. lot, um, I guess, a lot more conservative again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see how, how that plays out. Yeah. All right. So now let's talk about the world that you're playing in now at, at Wilton Investment Group. Why don't we give a for yes. example, or maybe talk about a recent deal that's been a part of a, a lot of my listeners are probably going, oh, exciting space, big yes. numbers. But let's, let's give them a taste of exactly what you're talking about. Maybe a last deal or just sure. a straw man. Sure. I'll, I'll give you one that I'm working on right now. Okay. It's, uh, it's actually in, uh, it's in Maryland. It's uh, Greenbelt, Maryland. It is a 354 unit apartment complex that we're looking to build. Again, we don't do ultra luxury. And in this market, we're very happy that we don't do that. We do build class A apartment complexes, but I'm not going to put granite or marble all over the apartment and so forth. So in this case, it's a 354 unit uh, project that we're building. And we come into the deal after all the entitlements, all the approvals Hmm. and the permits are pulled and the construction loan is in place. Okay. So for some of the novice, some for some of your novice listeners, let's use the example of it's a hundred million dollar construction job. Okay. I will probably get a construction loan for, or the developer will for 60 million. Mm. That that's about 60%. The other 40% is all the equity. Mm. We at Wilton will probably put up 80 to 85% of that. And we have the sponsor put up 15 to 20%. That way they have skin in the game. Okay. And we're all, our interests are aligned. We have a lot of uh, abilities. And that we make sure of because of our experience and our expertise. We have an entire construction management group in-house that does weekly calls, monthly site visits, reviews every drawer request that a developer has. So for anyone that invests with us on a deal, their entire portfolio or their investment is completely secured by us. We make sure that all of their interests are covered. So what we're allowing on this platform is for someone that may be interested in investing in an apartment house, let's say in this case in Maryland, but can't afford the 25 to $30 million dollars we say, hey, look, if you want to give me $2 million mm-hmm. and get an 11 or a 12% return on your money, mm-hmm. which is accruing because it's a construction job, mm-hmm. then it's a pretty safe bet because the developer is national. 
The developer has all the guarantees in place. The site work, all of that is already in place. All they have to do is put up their money, which we have already agreed to and committed to mm -hmm. putting up all of it. We're just giving the opportunities for other investors to come in, smaller ones. Gotcha. I hope that answers it somewhat, Michael. It, it does. It, it gives me a great vision. I just want to poke at it a little bit so people can see the true kind of timeline of this. Mm -hmm. So this yes. is a deal you're working on right now in Maryland, Greenbelt, 354 yes. units. When did this first hit your radar, right? Did you first hear this? 18 months ago when the developer goes, ooh, I found a plot of land where you want to be a part of this? Or when do you get tapped on the shoulder by this national builder and say, hey, I want you to be a part of this? We, we typically will get the phone call or the email during their entitlement phase. Okay. From the time that someone puts a contract to buy the land until they can get through all the approvals and the entitlements, it's typically 12 months to 18 months. Right. That's pretty, you know, because of what's going on. And even in the past, you're dealing with so many different authorities, mm -hmm. but they'll call us like halfway through, just like they're already calling their lender, their right. construction lender halfway through. And our commitment is sure. We read all the analysis. We did our own analysis. And one of the things again, for your listeners is, is that Wilton, what we do is even though the developer might spend 200 or 300,000 in soft costs, mm. getting it through the whole entire process, so that we can get involved, we'll spend probably $100,000 of our own money mm. duplicating or replicating the appraisal, the environmental, marketing, feasibility studies, because we want to make sure that if we're going to invest or if we're going to bring other people's money to invest, mm -hmm. we want to make sure and be very cautious of our investment and that it's going to succeed. Sure. So I want to put that out there. But, um, but to, you know, to, go, to go back into that statement, um, we will be in there halfway through and we'll commit before the entitlements are finished, but it is contingent on them getting everything through the system. Got it. So in your example, just using again, the hundred million dollar number. So you probably would have heard of this deal. I don't know, a year ago, maybe if they're halfway through, maybe nine months ago, 12 months uh, ago, something like that. Yep. Okay. It, we, 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 this one specifically, we got about eight months ago. Okay. We committed to the, we committed to the deal. I want to say we committed to the deal in um, November or December okay. of this past year. Yeah. And we actually, we actually just closed the deal, which oh, is nice. very interesting for your listeners. Even during this pandemic, we closed with the construction lender yeah. and the sponsor three weeks ago. Nice. So wow. Right in the middle. In the, right in the middle. So in this case, because everything was, was you know, buttoned up, the T's were crossed, the I's were dotted. And it's a great development, great sponsor. All the equity was there. There wasn't a downside for the lender. Right. Uh, there wasn't a downside for us. Right. So but, again, you know, so that's awesome. Yeah. So, so again, the construction loan comes in for 60 million. So that's covered. You want 15 million from, you know, skin in the game. And that means when you quote unquote committed, uh, you signed up to invest $25 million if I'm doing my math right. Is that about right? Yeah, give, give, give or take. Give or that's take. A, that's yeah. an approximate, you know, okay. whether it's this deal or any deal. I was giving that as a global no. number. Yeah, yeah. So now let's say I'm committed to $25 million. What Wilton does is Wilton will keep at least 50% of equity for them. So we'll keep in there a minimum of $12.5 million on this example. Hmm. And I will go out to the public to find investors that want to invest whatever, 1 million, I mean, 2 million, 3 million, 4 million, or even all 12 and a half million. Um, so that's how we look at that. Wow. So again, of the 25, Wilton Investment Group is keeping half. At least half. Right, right. now, I mean, we're committed to doing 100%. Ah, so I when, I, when I close this, when we close this three weeks ago, if we, if we don't find any investors, we're fine with that. Right. We're just... We, we want to do a, I'd like to say it's a community service. <laughs> We'd like to get the smaller investors the opportunity to invest in a very good and very secure real estate asset class, right. which is multifamily. Right. So it really gets them in on the ground floor. Uh, we're very transparent. Okay. Our website will have a portal so that that investor can go on anytime they want and get the weekly updates get the pictures of the development, where the progress is. And then, you know, 
we actually go and sell the assets mm -hmm. once the CO is given and once the lease up begins. Mm. That's when our investment ends. So we're typically, or an investor's typical uh, investment period is anywhere between three, three and a half years uh, of term. Very cool. So let's just make sure we, we've said smaller investors a couple of different times. I'm going to assume that these are all accredited investors. Yes, because we are looking for investors that, you know, will put in hopefully no less than two million. Okay. But if I find a couple that are at a million, I'll deal with that. Right. Uh, just less paperwork and, you know, yeah, yeah. things of that sort. But, uh, but we're fine either way. But we're not looking at the five or ten thousand yeah, dollars. No, no, I would. I, I imagine that non-accredited space is not a place you want to be. Too many risks, too many, too many gotchas right. there. A absolutely. So Correct. accredited investors, significant liquidity. Uh, you're talking about a minimum of a million, preferred two and above. Totally get right. it with these kind of assets. You're going to be locked in for three to three and a half years because, again, you sell the asset at lease up. Is that what I heard correctly? Yes. What we do is once there's a CO, we're already working with the developer. The developer has... Two, two options, of course. The developer can refinance if they want to keep it, mm -hmm. and they can re refinance us out of the deal. Gotcha. Or uh, we want to be out by stabilization. Oh, so stabilization. We don't want to, Got it. Okay. Right. We don't want to hurt the developer by saying you, you know, as soon as you get CEO, we want out because right. they can refinance at a better at a better terms if they have a nice, you know, 75, 85 yeah. percent occupancy. That makes. That's what I was checking. But, I was so, hoping that was the answer. Right. 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 And our backstop to that, Michael, is very simple. Again, because multifamily is the least risky of all the asset classes, uh -huh. if it is a bad time, if we're in a right, wrong part of the cycle, yeah. the only downside is we stay in a fully yeah. occupied, cash flowing, residential multifamily project where we get distributions, which our partners and our investors get the distributions. Yeah. So Controlling the downside. Add to yeah. Correct. yeah, Sam Zell talks about multifamily being the best place to be. Uh, he clearly calls out class A stuff as, as you know, the best place to be. So uh, you, you certainly got the grave dancer, as I'm sure you know his nickname, uh, yes. saying that's the place to be. So very, very cool. Um, so can you tell me more about this? Because you've called it a platform a couple of different times uh, yeah. with the Wilton Investment Group goes out. Just define what you mean by platform. Yes. So Wilton has been around, you know, for probably East Asia uh, and they came to the U S uh, and opened up, I should say in the U S about three years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, all their money is here. So it's, it's a U.S. operation, U S family uh, that uh, runs it. It's a small family office that just does this business, but the platform has always been where they put in all the equity. Got it. This is a relatively new platform where I, Kevin Swill, am out there using social media, doing conferences, doing roundtables, things of that sort to get the word out that mm -hmm. if you are an investor, you can come invest with us. You don't have to go to a, a, a public REIT and invest in a fund where you don't know where your money actually is. Mm -hmm. You might be happy with the returns or not. Here you're touching, you're feeling, you're investing alongside us mm -hmm. with our experience and our expertise. A little yeah. different. No, very cool. So now let's paint the picture. So I get it up front. They, they come in, they give you a couple of million bucks. Uh, do they see any distributions until that three, three and a half year mark? Is it all accruing or are there, there yes, I don't know, it, gates? Yes, it's all accruing because there isn't any, there isn't any cash flow okay. from the project at this point. Um, however, you know, if people are looking for a, a smaller return and, you know, we want to do a prep equity position versus ah. common equity, which is being alongside us, mm -hmm. I may be able to give them some current, but it would be very small pay, sure. mm -hmm. but that current pay is really coming out of Wilton's pocket. Yeah. So we'll get that back anyway at the end. Yeah. So it's, for the most part, it's, yes, you're putting a three-year investment there but you're following it along on a weekly or a monthly basis. Mm -hmm. So you know exactly where we are at all times. And you know, the downside is very limited mm -hmm. because all the guarantees are in place. Yeah, very cool. 
So um, again, you, with the investors that you have, you know, they can cut you a check or a wire for 2 million bucks. They're right there. They have staying and right. holding power through, through lots of things. So it makes total sense. They probably like the idea of keeping the money locked up for a couple of years. So they don't have to continually decide where else to put it. So, so that doesn't, right. that feels good and probably feels pretty normal to them. So now let's talk about where you see the world going in the next, I don't know what, put every time frame you want on it, six months, 12 months, 18, 36, don't, don't care. But we are clearly in an interesting time today, economically. This will have yeah. some kind of recovery, V, U, Nike, Swoosh, L, you know, whatever you call it. Uh, you know, you've been doing this a long time. I don't think you've seen anything like this before, but you know, part of what you do is look at the future. What are you seeing? Well, what I'm seeing is that technology is going to really run with this uh, as it relates to, uh, to real estate. Um, we, we're already seeing it where we have virtual tours, mm. um, which is really hard for me personally to grasp because I'm a touchy feely type person where yeah, if I'm going to go buy an asset. I want to go walk the dirt. If I want to buy a condo. You know, if I'm going to spend a million dollars and buy a condo, I want to be able to walk through that condo. Yeah. Uh, virtually is one thing, but the, the technology of, of real estate is really going to come to the forefront. And I think that the analytics that we look at are, you know, real capital analytics has some really good information on multifamily uh, where, you know, we were flat at the beginning of the year, pricing actually started to go up and now all of a sudden everything is just out of kilter. Yeah. I think that in multifamily, we are going to see a stable environment, I think in the next six to eight months. Uh, I believe that, you know, people that were looking to sell their homes to downsize, I think that right now they're just sitting pretty mm -hmm. and waiting uh, because they're afraid that they're going to get hurt on a sale. Mm -hmm. I think that um, the people that are renting are going to stay because they're not getting increases. Mm -hmm. um, so so that, that part of the population remains constant. Mm -hmm. The, the, Part of the population that will affect apartment living or multifamily are unfortunately these, these young adults that just graduated college or university. Yeah. They can't find employment. There's over 80% over whatever, you know, 40 million without jobs and they can't find jobs. So they're still at, they're at the still stay at home phase and they can't but hopefully as things open up and people can either work from home or what have you then the apartment will start ramping up even further mm -hmm. but there's still a demand for apartments um yes it's slower now it's much slower uh there are concessions out there that um you know will never end an example of one is you know last week you can apply for an apartment and you get 500 dollars off your moving costs you call the same place today on Tuesday after the weekend, and now it's you get with a, with, with a signed lease this week, you get one free month uh, rent. Wow. Big difference. Yeah. You know, on a on a two thousand dollar a month unit, you're getting two thousand versus last week it was only five hundred dollars, mm -hmm. and it was only off your costs, not your rent. So where I see it is very much getting better first in the multifamily space. Mm. I really think, but I think it's a lot with technology. And I think that people are becoming more accustomed to the virtual tours in a rental. Yeah. A little easier to deal with than a condo. Um, I don't see the office and I don't see the retail coming back anytime soon. Yeah. Yeah. If anything, if anything, you know, you're going to have more online, you're going to have those apps and, you know, those businesses, um, make tremendous amounts of money mm -hmm. through the technology uh, portals, but I don't see an issue in multifamily long-term. Mm. Quite frankly, me personally, yep. I'm still building and I will still build, but I'm very, very specific on the areas throughout the United States that we will go and we will look at and we will understand the analytics and go from there. Very cool. So two questions kind of pushing back on themes that I have going and maybe they're just wrong. First, do you see this trend of moving out of big cities and it's easiest to pick on New York and San Francisco as examples? 
now that their employers, right, New York is on record, the financial institutions are saying, we're going to let a majority of our folks work from home forever. You, then you have tech companies going, we're going to shrink our office space, get out of the office, go live where you want. So do you see that as a trend that has legs or do you think that's a knee jerk reaction that kind of reverses itself in six or 12 months? No, I, I definitely believe it's a trend. And I think at least for the foreseeable future, and when I say that, I say at least two to three years, I see that being the way it's going to be. Mm. I think based on where the economy goes, based on where this country goes with its leadership, because you know, as we know, mm -hmm. we have an election this year, which you know can be a drastic change or not, we don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, but, I, but I think for the foreseeable future, and when I say that, I say two to three years, sure. I don't see it changing. I think that this will be the new trend. Yeah. We'll, you will find more and more people working from home. Yeah. So that probably means your location, again, going back to Greenbelt in, in Maryland, yes. is important, right? Because you don't want to over, like, if this was May last year, you might overpay for prime real estate in a hot city like New York or San Francisco, just Correct. picking on them. But today, that's a negative probably yes. because it also takes longer to build and higher permitting and all that yada, yada, yada. You want to be in suburbia today, which yes. is, oh, by the way, lot costs are cheaper. So it's Correct. kind of all good things. Okay. That makes yeah, sense. Like, well, the other deal, the other deal besides Maryland is we're, we're in Denver. We're not in downtown Denver. We're in a place called Lakewood. Ah. So Lakewood, where we went is literally a, five to 10 minute train ride. It's only two stops from downtown Denver huh. on the light rail. And we are building directly across the street from that train station. But the rents are 20% lower than downtown, more of a workers uh, employment center. Yeah. So for us, we like the big MSAs, but we're looking right outside Makes because sense. those will still be fine. Like you said, suburbia, suburbia is going to be there. Um, yeah. But yeah, New York, LA, uh, th they're having some problems because of the employment and the pandemic. Yeah, absolutely. and I don't see it changing. No, I don't either. I think I think that's I think that's a trend. You know, it starts as a slow leak, but it's 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 going to be hard to patch because not only do you have that slow leak, but then you have what comes next, and that is higher taxes, more fees, because they got to make up. You know, at least in California, a fifty-four billion dollar shortfall in revenue. Right. You know, that's just going to kick more people out or, or cause more people to leave. So the last question I have is on apartments versus houses. One of the things that I've known by yes. watching um, crises of the past is people always remember the last crisis. And I'm on record as saying the lesson learned from this crisis is probably twofold. One helps apartments. One, in my opinion, hurts apartments. The first one is space. Space is good, especially my space, meaning front yard, backyard, right? Kick the kids out yep. while I'm on a conference call, blah, blah, blah easier to shelter in place in a house than an apartment. Can't argue that. But then, you know, the other one is save money, right? You know, no longer buying Gucci shoes and Prada bags and all that other stuff. I want to, I want to live a simpler life and, and, you know, save. So maybe that means renting is better. I don't, I don't know where this washes out, but this crisis is clearly trying to teach us something, I think. I, I, I tend to agree with you there, Michael. And it's interesting because I can give you the live example again. So I'm down here in Florida and um, both of my children who are of uh, working age, one's just graduated college and the other one is already, you know, finished and working. And they were concerned and they came and they stayed with us. Hmm. And we live in a condo. And Time and time again, they kept saying, I wish we still had the house yeah. up north because it would have been more space for us. But it goes both ways, as you had indicated, because of that, because they were here, yeah. we saved so much money right. on both of their rents, yeah. on their miscellaneous expenses, all of their Uber charges that yeah. they would typically do you know, in their little cities, all of the restaurant and credit card bills that I typically pay for my children. Yeah. But, you know, for us, it was a lot of savings. Yeah. I also see, I also see whether this was before or during uh, the pandemic was that many people now don't want those large homes. A yeah, lot, many sure. more people are starting to downsize. Oh yeah. And I will tell you that the millennium, 
you know, the, the Generation X and all, of, they don't want the large houses anymore. No. Yep. So, you know, so that part is a little different. And then if you're going to go rent one of those large homes, you're still going to pay a lot of money. Now it might be a little bit less. Mm. So it becomes difficult then for the homeowner. Yeah. Who might be renting the house. Yeah, I think the high end is toast. You know, jumbo loans are hard to come by. That you know, you got to be you know nearly yeah. eight hundred credit score, twenty percent down. They frankly don't want to lend jumbo loans today. Uh, but yeah, then you have new home sales just this morning, up one percent month yeah. on month after being expected to be down twenty two percent. And again, they're calling yeah, three hundred. Yeah, three hundred and below is on fire. Five hundred and above, slow. So I think right. this is all the, right. millenn the millennials are buying for the first time. They want space. They are buying in suburbia, back to that conversation. I think yes. this health crisis is, is, is really going to change consumer psychology. Uh, I think, you know. Yes, I think the landscape, the landscape will change. Uh, we'll have to focus on that. We'll have to try to understand the needs and what people, as we grow and understand the way this new world is, uh, is behaving. Yeah. Very, very cool. Well, Kevin, do me a favor. How can people follow you on social media? How can they get a hold of you? And you know, what website well, do you want them to go to? Well, the website is uh, is wiltongroup.com. Okay. Uh, and that's with two L's. And and quite frankly, if people want to email me, it's easy. It's it's caseswill, K-S-W-I-L-L, -L, at wiltonmanagement.com. Very, very cool. I will I put also, that in the description. Yeah, and my name my name is out out there on uh, on LinkedIn. People can look me up on LinkedIn, and I can put them in touch. Uh, people want brochures, just get in touch with me. Very cool, Kevin. Well, I appreciate you doing this. This is always fun talking to someone who's been in the game doing big, big numbers. Again, one thing we've learned in this crisis is water, food, shelter. Shelter yes. is important. Nobody wants to live in their cars. And again, I think you're wise to be building just outside the city centers or downtowns. Uh, yes. this, this suburbia trend is something that's not going to stop. So, uh, can, Kevin, congratulations on all your success. Thank you, Michael. Appreciate the time. You got it.